uh, folks are here at Artec with the Edition 30. Alex there in the background. I'm gonna try and get to the root of some of the little issues on the car. Got a little idle misfire, you guys, you can hear. Struggles on cold start as well. You probably won't be able to tell from the video, um, but it's definitely there. What I'm noticed after like a drive when you like do maybe an hour's journey, the misfire tends to go away. So there's that, also the exhaust seems to be hanging on from what I can hear. Every time you go over a little bump, there's like a kind of like a crashing noise. Another edition there, yeah, here. What is a uh, rare one? Rare one, yeah. It's because you've got all of the edition days in the UK here, isn't it? Do you know what happens if you put stuff on your roof when you've got a sunroof? <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Car's up on the lift. See what the cause of this rattle is. Fixed. Mm. <laughs> Loosen that off there, slide that in there, and it's cured it, it's in here. No, you've been off roading it, mate. It's got the couple. I think it was like that when we got it, to be fair. Oh, any excuse, not driver ever. No, no, never. Bridges. It's been parked since the last time you saw it, to be fair. Maybe it's that. Heat shield in this, isn't it? Yeah. It just sounds like a, a bag of spanners every time you go over a speed bump, that's the main noise. Okay. Sheriff clips. So that's pretty much this heat shield was causing all the rattle then. Yeah. For the most part. Is, the go corroded you'll see in there. Yep. Over time. Because it just made a thin metal that so that's what you do, just put that on socket. Mm-hmm. See the one there is just fully corroded away. Yep. That's what you do. Yeah. Just work nice and tight, just touch heat shield right. So the exhaust itself wasn't actually that loose then? No. You need to pull it across a little bit. Mm-hmm. Cause it was hitting there, it's all good now. It was rear right that was rattling. Rear right? Okay. Another thing that just corrodes on these. Yeah. Thin metal. It hasn't got one on the left, hasn't it? So well, we've got some in stock, so we can put one back on for you. Fixed it. You is, one. is there any real drawback to taking it off? Not really. Yeah, we'll take it off then. <laughs> Save the hassle with the other one starting to rattle. Rattle's finished now. Car's back down, idling. All right, Pip. How you doing, mate? Snap on machines out in full force. Big boys out. Big boys out. How much was that? About ten grand. <laughs> right, we're gonna go look at more expensive stuff. Can I even get through here? Who's all these looking? All the this. Oh, so you get all of this with that? With it, yeah. So it was just 10 grand on its own on the, on the machine. So it was 10 grand then? <laughs> it was 10 grand with the cabinet, with the touch screen and everything. Right, so misfire check. If you guys remember that previous video we done on the Edition 30, everything wrong with it. We did have a few logs then. The car's been parked since then, so we haven't readdressed really anything. It's not major, but it's there on the cylinder 4. We know more when the injectors are. Yeah. And then you've got your timing, nicely one. This is your main one. So your timing, actual and specified, should be about the same, give or take, minus 10, bar 10. Yeah. Give it a proper flip and both readings should read together. I'm not sure if you can see it because of the reflection. It's all good. Yeah. It's totally rammed here with Mark 5 GTIs everywhere and for some reason they're all black today. Literally everywhere. I feel like I need to go buy a grey one now. Shouldn't have sold my other one. But yeah, Alex is working on... <laughs> and so the plan right now, Alex, what, we're we just taking off the inlet? Inlet, check your injectors and we'll, we'll clean this one as well. Sweet. <laughs> First I've seen on the inside this engine. What are we thinking so far? That's quite... Uh, 129,000 miles of... That's quite mucky, doesn't it? Yeah. You'll be looking in there. So it's good to see it hasn't got a runner flap to leave or anything like that, or they ain't just chilling in there. That's, that's a good sign, yeah. Yeah, they're quite built up. Still enough on there, isn't it? Built the baskets don't get annihilated, so that's a good sign. So we're going to get a clean set of these as well. Sweet. Which Corey's doing next door at the minute. Right. But they're quite thick, to be fair. They are, actually. It's a lot of restriction there. <laughs> <laughs> probably, so, you know, probably why it runs a bit strange. It's weird, when you're driving it, you could never tell there's anything wrong with the car. Yeah. So, I suppose they're just really yeah. sensitive. All sorts going on with the edition day today. All sorts. <laughs> Thank you.
Looking a lot tidier there. This one I'll just have a quick blast. Quick blast, walnut shells. This one as well. Cleaning up nice. Yeah, coming out really nice. Right, so we're gonna have a look at the injector condition, see if they are dodgy or whatever. <laughs> And hopefully this is the cause of the idle misfire, hopefully. Mainly what you're looking at this point are the filter baskets. Right. Indeed. So we're going to pull the filter baskets out first. Yep. See what sort of condition they're in. This is the biggest killer of TFSI injectors. Right. The filter baskets collapsing. Mm -hmm. As you can see, they ain't even no gauze in that left. It's mm -hmm. just a plastic. Yep. Which it's a plastic that damages it, so at least the plastic's still there. Do you reckon those have never been out of the car? These have never been out. Well, these filter baskets have never been off. There's no sign of them. Yeah. These ain't been out. Obviously, we don't put the plastic filter baskets back in. What mm. you get is a wire mesh filter basket that sits in there. Because those other ones literally just what, fall apart over time. They just fall apart. That's the point where they're usually about saveable. From right. that point, your plastics and start breaking down then mm -hmm. they go into your injectors. This mm -hmm. case of people using chemicals, rubbish fuel, 99, 95 wrong fuel, stuff like that over time, yeah. it does break them down. These are your Teflon seals. Mm -hmm. They're prone to blow out as well, so we don't even use Teflon seals now. We use a graphite seal instead. Main dealers have started using now. If you look at the 1.2s and stuff like that, you get the black graphites right. on them now. BMWs have started using graphite as well. Go in the machine in order, one, two, three, and four, we put on the injector first just to get the fuel out of the injector. See a little bit of fluctuation in number three there as well. Yeah. And Nicky turning the lights out, thank you. You might be able to see the fluctuations a bit better. Number four is completely on the angle compared to the rest. So that's your cranking, so this is how your injectors crank with different duty cycles. Yeah. So four is the one that's causing breaking. Four, maybe three as well, but I looked at this. Okay, four injectors, you should be about the 65 mark on all of them. Mm -hmm. Between 65 and 70, you can get but ideally within that sort of range that we're looking for. Yeah, deja vu from the great GTI videos you guys might remember. About a year ago now as well, Pip. <laughs> is it? Yeah, about a year ago that was. Really, yeah. yeah. So that's number three, that's running a bit higher, which I would expect compared to the spray pass, and it's still within yeah. tolerance. Boots. This one with the slot misfire. Yeah, this, this would would be in a tiny bit lower. So interesting. There you go. But like I say, spray pattern on these two were the worst. Right. Number three, I knew we're going to be quite bad. Number mm -hmm. four, you are down a little bit. At number one, but mm -hmm. we were looking more at spray patterns than anything else on these because of the minute cool. misfires. So you're looking deeper into the mm -hmm. actual why it's doing it yeah. not always a flow it's spray patterns everything direct injection you do need a good spray pattern then hop up around to clean oh it's basically getting liquid straight through you can see it, yeah it's coming up out of the small hole and onto the big hole we have got a vacuum chamber as well which we're doing a bit i'll let it run for a couple of processes and then we'll put the vacuum chamber on it and pull everything out as well just to give them a fighting chance we're also going to tackle the thermostat as well aren't we yeah we've got a, we've got a fresh one here sweet Ready to go out the box, genuine Volkswagen. Sorted. This is one of those things that is not an expensive part, but it's a pain to get to, isn't it? Yeah. It's one Best of them. to do it. If you're booking in for a net and jet screen, you know your temperature drops, just let us know and we can uh, change thermostat while you're there. Yeah, crack on with it basically. And all you got to do is pay for the part. I noticed that when I first picked up the car that the temperatures used to be a bit, you know, they used to drop down from 90 here and there. Um, I haven't driven it enough recently to notice it, if I'm honest, but yeah. Has this guy engine delete pip? Engine delete, turbo delete. Powered by Pip and Gory. It's still four wheel uh, drive. Powers brake horsepower. It's still four wheel drive though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> nice Michelin on it though, fair play. Actually, oh, the back's got Bridgestones. It gives me good <laughs> memories of my S3, this does, except my one did work. Injector's going back in. This graphite one's a bit of a tight fit, but freshly cleaned. Stop some blowing out. New plugs going in. NGK Iridium. BKR7 EIX. Standard affair. Best in the game. Best in the game. Fresh plugs, there they are. And there's the old battered ones. <laughs> there 
It's having a hissy fit now. Yes, Alex. Full start on the APR. Misfires. Misfires all sorted. One, two, and three. Four. Nothing there anymore. Awesome. Car's finally running nice. <laughs> Car's finally have its health check. Nick's gonna work some magic. I believe it's got a Revo Stage 1 on it. I don't know, maybe just put that in the advert. And then the second guy who sold it, he took it off the advert and he said it's stuck, so. Whatever it is, we'll sort it out. Put you a little base map on it just to yeah. do it so you can play with it so it matches all the hardware what you've got for now because i suppose the other the map they had on it was before i had an exhaust as well and the intake it was just a stock gearbox everything it's just a, maybe just a is it wheel spin either i haven't floored it because i thought i wouldn't take the mick in it before you've checked it <laughs> i've kept it proper like it's been hard for me because you've been used to the gray one and getting the gti it doesn't really move but Soon come, I guess. Is this your mapping position then, Nick? Because I've noticed when you sit in the dining room, you sit like you're lying down almost. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right, so the map's all on then, Nick. Yes. Gower power. Gower power. Give a good drive back. Oh. Little I'll teaser or what's to way. come, so make sure you are subscribed, of course. I'm going to take you for a little drive around the block. I am still a bad passenger, but whatever. See that? Like, not mapped the DHG. Okay. Since we ran out of time. Yep, so it's just a... So I've done a hikey mod, so the DHD allows full torque. Okay. But I've just made the uh, engine ECU mm -hmm. lie to the DSG going, look, I'm only at 350 foot at Newby metres at all. Right, okay. Not at 400 Newby metres or whatever. Quite tight for his mileage. Yeah, it's a good car. I've drove cars with half this mileage and they've been a bit rattly and a bit wobbly. Yeah. That's, that's just the interesting thing with this car, is like when I get in it, it just feels nice. Like you can just cruise around in it. That's all I've been doing pretty much. Because the APR sounds noisy as well, so. It does sound like it's exhaust. It just rumbles along. <laughs> the uh, E bombs, I think, making all that noise. Yeah, that's definitely got power. Enough well, to get the wheels chirping. Only stage two. Yeah? So you're really limited on the torque potential. We'll, we'll get all of those limits removed soon, I'm sure. I love that DSG bag. It's awesome, isn't it? It's like a proper like bag. AK-47. <laughs> you have to front flip that one. Right. So with some DSGs, I don't mind doing yeah. over the maps with DSGs because it fits the gearbox. Right. You, you'll get a point on your front that part of it. You can yeah, yeah. your teeth out. So I try to do it as naturally as I can. Um, so sometimes it won't do it, then you just throttle blip it as you're coasting down. Oh, and it'll pop it back. You definitely got me back on the bug now again. It's been a, we'll get, been we'll a good, good few months. I've uh, just been missed. Well, I say good few months, it's only been about two months pretty much since the grey one went. And like, I've been missing that kind of thrust that these things have. It's like, been even, a strange year for you, really, isn't it? Yeah. We, just, we, we're going what's going on the lockdown and everything. Yeah. Like, get back into your stride as I enjoy it. 100%. So. Going forward, plenty of exciting things to come. Make sure you are subscribed for a lot more content to come. Give the video a thumbs up. Of course, come and see the boss man here. I will leave you with some overrun. <laughs>